The word fallacy is so commonly used these days that it's pretty challenging, especially for newcomers in the field, to determine when we are talking about logical fallacies and, when it's the case, what type of fallacy we are talking about. So there's a trick to find some sense in the jungle of fallacies, having in mind robust typologies. I suggest that you go beyond the informal versus formal fallacy and to delve a bit into the question of inferences. Firstly, you need to understand what an inference is and to become more careful about how you use words like deduction. Um, in this video, we will examine different forms of reasoning and provide a few examples with regards to how a um, given fallacy is usually attached to a particular form um, of reasoning. So, Let's start with the basics, shall we? What is an inference? An inference is made of two logically connected statements. You are making an inference when you are going from statement A to statement B. And the statement B is supposed to derive from statement A. Therefore, if there's only one claim or one statement, it's not an inference. For instance, humidity in the air has dropped by 25% since yesterday. It's not an inference. But having two statements is not enough. The second one must derive from the first one. If you say, humidity in the air has dropped by 25% yesterday, it is predicted that it will increase by 13% today. It's still not an inference, because the second statement does not logically derive from the first. Now, if you say, humidity in the air has dropped by 25% yesterday, it must be because we had nice weather yesterday. Now you are dealing with an inference. Now, let's put a name on the different types of inferences. The first one, the most famous one, is deduction. Everyone knows this word. And it is when you go from the general rule to particular cases. The second one is induction. It's when you go from the particular cases to the general rule. Induction is somehow synonym to generalization. Last but not least, the least famous inference, abduction. No, we are not talking about UFOs abducting cows in the night. It corresponds to the, what you do when you formulate an hypothesis to explain a phenomenon. The concept is pretty recent, 19th century, and we owe it to a, a philosopher called Pierce. Now that you have a better understanding of how inferences work, you should be more specific when you use words like deduction. Let me give you an example of what you should avoid from now on. All the swans I have seen in my life are white. This is statement A. Therefore, all swans are white. This is statement B. In everyday language, whenever you do this kind of thing, you say, I deduce that all the swans are uh, white. Uh, well, this time, now that you know the, the subtleties, you should stop using words like deducing. Uh, don't, don't use them like a commoner. In this case, what you are doing is a generalization, therefore an induction. You are not deducing, you are inducing that all the swans are white. Or if you want to use a more um, correct term, you, you just say infer. I infer that all the swans are white. I don't deduce. It may sound a bit posh, but at least it is technically correct. Why am I being so pernickety? Because it will save you from a lot of confusion, trust me. 